Assalamu alaikum everyone. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Non Snoozes. This is The Quranic Themes and today we will be talking about speech. So this time we are going to try something new and this is putting Jared on the spot. Mm-hmm. We'll give him 14 verses, one minute per verse. So we'll have 14 minutes overall to explain the verses. Perfect, I'm ready for the challenge. You know what? Let's go watch the opening comeback and we'll have the challenge. Right before we go see the challenge, if you remember in the last episode, we announced a giveaway and a lot of you commented, so we have chosen a winner. It is Maryam Muhammad Ali. So if you're watching this, please message us on the Instagram page of The Non Snoozer so we can get your address and send you the book. This episode, the topic is speech, as you know, and we have chosen a book called The Element of Eloquence. It is written by Mark Forsyth. It's a hilarious book, fun to read and very informative, and it gives you techniques on how to improve the quality of your speech and writing. And in order to interest you to read this book, I'm going to read a passage. Shakespeare was not a genius. He was without the distant shadow of a doubt, the most wonderful writer who ever breathed, but not a genius. No angels handed him his lines, no fairies proofread for him. Instead, he learned techniques, he learned tricks, and he learned them well. I hope you enjoy reading it. Challenge time! 14 verses, 14 minutes, Javut versus time. So I'll give you one minute for mm-hmm. each verse and you will have 14 minutes overall. Okay, so if for example I finish explaining one verse quicker, uh, can I save that time for the next verse? Yeah, sure. So you have 14 minutes overall. 14 minutes in overall uh, to explain 14 verses. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And whatever it comes to my mind, I'll just say it. <laughs> Whatever comes to your mind. Okay. It has to. And and all the verses are relevant to speech, the theme? Yes. Okay. So it's all about speech. All about speech. 14 verses. And uh, let's do that. Okay. Ready? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Verse 3 to 4 from Surah Al-Rahman. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان. Beautiful. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان. So God is saying that God created insan and taught insan communication. What comes to my mind? Okay, what comes to mind is that perhaps, according to this verse, the most fundamental quality uh, of a human being is the ability to communicate. You know, God wanted to mention one thing. So that shows how important bayan and speech and communication is uh, fundamental in who we are. You know, what makes us different, for example, to animals, to, um, to robots, machines, is the ability and the quality of our communication. Okay, I should stop. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 18 from Surah Qaf. ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Okay, so you will not say any word unless there's an observer. Um, okay, so the literal meaning of this could be that maybe there's an angel watching whatever you, uh, watching recording whatever you say. Mm-hmm. But perhaps a deeper meaning of that is that whatever we say will impact the world. Every word is going to have consequences. It's going to change something in the world. And we have to be very careful with every single word. word. And um, okay, let's go to the next verse. Uh, verse 15 from Surah Al-Nur. Uh-huh. Okay, what comes to mind? Okay, one thing which is very interesting. Oh, let me just translate. It's basically this idea that if you say things which you don't have knowledge of, that is a grave and a huge mistake. Mm-hmm. Now, the interesting thing is God is saying that to me this is huge. If I say something is huge, it doesn't mean much because to me even a mountain is huge. Mm-hmm. But to God, the creator of the universe, he says this is huge. And that shows the importance of making sure that we only say, we only share information on social media, etc., things which are correct. Mm. Because, you know, we rely on information to act and build the world. And if someone puts wrong information, the whole process is ruined. And I should go to the next verse because I want my time. <laughs> verse 36 from Surah Isra. وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عَنْ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُعَادَ كُلٌ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Okay, so the idea is very similar. Again, it says don't say things which you don't have knowledge of. Uh, so again, emphasizing on the previous point. But the interesting thing is this. God says, I had given you Samuel al-Basar wal-Fu'ad. 
So he says, don't say things which you're not sure of. And then he's like, hey, dude, I've given you Samuel Bassa, like you've been, which is like your ears, your eyes, and your ability to think and all of that. So God is saying, before you talk, go and do some research, right? So it's very linked, like to, you know, the ability to seek knowledge. Okay, let's just go to the next verse. Avoid deceptive talks, avoid deception. Now, what can we say about that? Deception is bad. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's, let's, let's look at it this way. What happens when we try to deceive someone? It's either, for example, we've done something wrong, and instead of apologizing, we try to make excuses. Or, for example, uh, we want to get something from this person. If we're just honest, it would be difficult communication, difficult conversation. So we try to deceive them. But in all of these examples, what we're trying to do is uh, basically avoid the honest, difficult thing. Mm. Avoid the hard thing. So deception is basically what a loser would do. Instead of doing the right thing, the hard, honest thing, we're trying to deceive. We're trying to present the world in a way which is not true. That's what deception is, right? I want to get something from you. So I deceive you. I present reality in a different way. Which means that if we want to really go deep, it means that I am going against the nature of reality. Because when I'm deceiving you, I try to paint reality in a different way to you. And that is why they say a liar is the enemy of God. Because God is at the bottom of reality. Okay, let's go to the next one. Fast 11 from Surah Al-Hajurat. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la yaskharu qawman min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum. Okay, so in this verse, God is saying, do not make fun of other group. There may actually, the people you're humiliating may actually be better than you. Mm -hmm. The meaning is quite clear, so I don't know what to say. Maybe the only thing I would say is that here God is diagnosing us. So maybe God is saying that the quality in the heart which leads to the bad behavior of humiliation is arrogance. Mm -hmm. You think you're better than other people. And we know arrogance is one of the deadliest sins. Because as soon as we become arrogant, we think we're great, we become blind to the higher levels, and that just stops our growth. So maybe this is more like a diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, verse 1 from Surah Al-Hamza. Okay, woe to every fault-finding, we can say, scorning, backbiting person, the one who gives others titles. This is very quite clear. It's a very practical rule. Do not try to use your words to attack people because of their faults. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's oh. go to the next one. Verse 12 from Surah Al-Hajarat. وَلَا يَخْتَبْ بَعْضَكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيَحِبُّ أَحَدَكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيِّتًا This is one of the most famous verses, right? Mm -hmm. Do not backbite. Backbiting is like eating the, dead, the meat of your dead brother. Mm -hmm. The imagery is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't want to picture this. Why is it that backbiting is so brutal that God has used such imagery for it? Maybe the reason for it is that when we backbite someone, it means that they, you know, we, we knew something private of them and now we're sharing it, right? So not only we are going against the quality in God, which is satarul oyub, because God always covers mistakes. Why? Because God wants to give people the opportunity to make amends, right? To make up their mistakes, repent and everything. So as soon as we backbite, we go against this quality of God, satarul uyu. We may even put people on defensive. They wouldn't want to fix their mistakes or whatever. And also we betray their trust, which is the worst thing because foundation of relationships and friendships is trust. So when you backbite people, you're basically telling people that, you know what, there's no safe space for you. You know, because between friends, you may want to be comfortable, share things that you can't share with others, with strangers. At least here with my friends, I want to be honest. But what backbiting does is that it re destroys this trust. So you never feel safe. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Verse 54 from Surah Al-An'am. وَإِذَا جَاكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بَآيَاتِنَا فَقَالْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ So when believers come to you, say سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ And um, peace be upon you. This is the verse perhaps which has started this habit among Muslims to greet each other with salam. Mm -hmm. Peace be upon you. Well, obviously that's beautiful. You start your communication by saying peace be upon you. And... It's not just that I'm going to say peace be upon you, salam alaikum, and that's it. No, it means that throughout my speech, throughout my communication, I have to make sure my words don't harm you, right? So when I say salam alaikum, 
I am giving you the assurance that you would be safe from me, but it's also a reminder for myself, make sure this, I, I keep this promise. That's not an easy promise, right? Okay. We're promising this, and if then we go and harm others through our words, not only we've harmed them, but also we've broken a promise. So that's two own goals. Wow. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Last passage from Surah An-Nahl. الذين تتوفهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون السلام عليكم. Oh, beautiful. So if you live like that, if you live in a way that people are immune from your harms, then once you die, the angels will say salamu alaykum. You try to make sure people are safe from you. Now you are safe. Salamu alaykum. In heaven, the angels will tell to that person. Okay, let's move to the next verse. Which verse is this like in terms of number? So that was the 10th one. Now it's 11. Oh my God, we've got four more. Come on, come on. Let's do it. Surah 11. Sorry. <laughs> Verse 63 from Surah Al-Furqan And when the jahil, the ignorant, is talking to you, say salamu alaykum. It doesn't mean that say salamu salama. It, it doesn't mean literally say salam. It just means that when you're dealing with someone who's ignorant, who doesn't have knowledge, don't look down on them, right? Treat someone who doesn't have knowledge with compassion. Right? Although I have to say that jahil doesn't just mean the one who doesn't have knowledge or ignorant. Jahil could also mean someone who has knowledge but cannot act according it. Right? So someone who wants to get rid of something but he can't. Failing. is failing. So it's basically saying towards someone, be nice because if you're not nice, what's going to happen? You're just going to push them away. So they're not going to come towards you to learn from you perhaps. So always have an attitude of compassion towards someone who doesn't have knowledge or someone who's failing. And the interesting thing is that that person who's failing could be ourselves. If, for example, I'm trying to get rid of a habit, but I keep failing, I should tell myself salama, because I'm that jahil, right? So don't blame yourself. Don't go too hard on yourself if you're failing in an area. Be nice. And then that would give you the energy to fix yourself. And let's go. Let's move on to the next verse. Verse 86 from Surah An-Nisa. وَإِذَا حَيِّتُمْ بِتَحَيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّهَا So this verse is saying if you're greeted, greet nicer or at least the same way and uh, this doesn't mean that for example just if someone says salam you say salam alaikum no it means that make it nicer you can smile and also it's not limited to greeting mm -hmm. the foundation is this if someone shows you love and niceness you show them love and niceness as well at least the same amount it would be even better to show more next verse please from verse 83 from surah al-baqarah وَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا وَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا actually I was reading tafsir of uh, Al-Mizan about this you know uh, some time ago Alame says that it says قُولُ لِلنَّاسِ for humanity for mankind nas people Muslim non-Muslim I don't know Shia non-Shia whatever they are قُولُ لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا speak to people beautifully no matter who they are every single human person you have to speak to them nicely Okay, next verse, come on. Verse 53 from Surah Al-Isra. وَقُلِّ عِبَادِيَ يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَعُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ الْإِنسَانِ يَعْدُوَ مُبِينًا So beautiful. In the previous verse, God says, speak husna. So we speak beautifully. Here it says that, you know what? Not only speak beautifully, but speak ahsan. Try to even make it more beautiful. Why? Because that would remove the room for shaitan to create problems. How so? Let's say I'm talking to a friend and I can express myself two ways. Either, for example, I can say it normally or I, and then that, you know, at the end of it, the person would, masalan, maybe have some questions. Okay, did he mean this? Is he upset with me? Is, for example, he trying to offend me? Is he happy? You know, there would be room for some misunderstanding or confusion or someone to get upset. So God is saying, add things to your sentence, add beauty, add adjectives, add whatever you can to your sentence to make sure once it's out there, there is no room for misunderstanding, wow. right? So make your speech watertight. And the uh, next verse, Beautiful. that's, your that's it, that was it? Yes, you found <laughs> okay. it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was a challenge. Yeah. That was it. okay. Now that I'm out of time, can I just explain this last one a little bit more? Uh, maybe I'm joking. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> so you know this is very interesting. You know, it's so God had said. By the way, I, the challenge is over. I get to talk. Yeah, you get to talk. <laughs> so God says, speak to everyone husna, nasa husna. Speak to everyone beautifully. So you never have the permission to speak um, ugly. 
to speak rudely, disrespectfully. But then even when you want to speak nicely, God says there are levels. And then try to go higher, right? So for example, I can never tell you something rude, or I can never talk to you in a disrespectful manner. I have to speak to you respectfully. But even in speaking respectfully, God says, try to go, make it more respectful. Make it nicer. Make it nicer. Ahsan. And it's beautiful. The idea here is amazing. And he says, if you do this, then you don't give shaitan any room to create any what? Misunderstanding, any fights, right? And actually, now just it came to my mind. Part of it is that there wouldn't be any misunderstanding, right so i leave the room for any misunderstanding by making myself super clear yeah by saying everything i mean and also when i try to speak that nicely to anyone naturally there would be less conflict between us wow, that's so right true. because you feel so respected yeah. you feel so honored that naturally even if later on a conflict happens you know your place in my eyes how respected you are right so it, it's beautiful I love that. and it's and i love this idea that god says try and keep making your speech more beautiful wow how how did you find this challenge it was fascinating <laughs> i i um i just hope that i managed to do justice to the verses i tried to say things which i think would take our understanding of the verses a little bit deeper okay so so inshallah this was um some of the verses mm -hmm. in the quran yeah about speech so inshallah next week we're going to move on to another theme or what are we going to do so next week we're going to give you 40 more verses <laughs> to go through the same challenge again and um yeah let's hope we finish it on so time. what are we going to do next week another 14 verses 14 verses about speech and then we've covered all the verses about speech mm -hmm. can we have the same one again <laughs> no not the same one unfortunately <laughs> okay so inshallah next week we're going to do another 14 verses, mm -hmm. but about the same topic, yeah? Yes. About the same topic with the same rule. Yeah. Okay. So, inshallah, let's see how that one goes. Um, thank you so much. Would you thank like to say anything? You. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you join us next week. Make sure also you watch the other episodes. And can't wait to see you in the next episode. Take care.